I, dude, what's have you? I mean, obviously you went to a doctor because you got crutches. I've just been talking to Aaron. He's been walking me through it, figuratively and literally. Yep, oh. nothing you can do. <laughs> Gotta get some good old X-rays. Do, do you want to keep your crutches? In the back? <laughs> Are we live? We are live. All right. So welcome to another episode of our incredible podcast of uh, all things real estate, right? All things real estate minus David today. Minus Dave. Minus Minus Dave. Dave. There you go. There you go. That's why we have VKDF today. Ha ha ha. There you go. So quick market update. Uh, You know, before we do market, let's do something fun. What did we do last night, guys? We had an award ceremony last night. And and who won the awards? Um, us. That's right. We That's won right. first place for oh, all Oh, we got Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Right of the year. That's year. very cool. There you go. Shattered Rookie kneecap of the year. Of the yeah. year. Uh, top, uh, top production team. Uh, uh, Most with units. Sales, uh, CGI. Listings, GCI. So pretty much all the way around, right? And, and we owe a big thanks to our clients, right? For sure. Right? And uh, keep, keep those calls coming in and consultations so we can continue to to uh, not only reward ourselves, but our clients with incredible properties and investments and homes and all that good stuff. Right? For sure. For trusting us. It was a good time? Yeah, I, good I time. I spent the night in LAX, but thank you guys for representing. Yeah, yeah I was I was Mark, as you got about eight awards. I walked up there each time. And nice. I felt really powerful being called Mark Von Kano. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny one. All right. So, so we got Mark's, <laughs> Mark's, Ma- Mark's Monday market minute. market minute. Mark's it's market Wednesday. minute. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Mark's Wednesday's market minute. All right, so let's cut to that chase. So, interesting times, right? We're seeing signs of a little bit of a shift happening right now, but inventory is still incredibly low. We've got about 730 homes, single family homes on the market with about 319 townhomes to be exact. Uh, what I find really interesting, and I'll let one of you guys answer this. So, we have a total of about 1,050 total homes on the market, but we've got 1,600 pending. Which first is interesting because last week it was low 900. So the houses are coming on just as quick as they're coming off, I think. They're, they're still selling very quick. I mean, again, we're seeing, uh, you know, we had the other house on Arapaho that we had 11 offers on it. And we're currently in contract as of last night, roughly 20, 25% over list price on that. So definitely we're still seeing the act, activity happening. It's still crazy, but how do you explain that continuing? We got now interest rates. I was shocked to see interest rates are close to 5% now. Yeah, all of a sudden I hear Mark 5%. from the office goes, hey, our rate's 5%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the past, what month? I've seen everyone's pre-approval go from about 3.8 to about 4.8. There's some lenders right now who are quoting um, rates based upon them already thinking that they're going to buy a point. So they're quoting them based on a, a bought point already, yeah. which is... So, so key question, make sure you talk to your, yeah. your mortgage broker, where's that interest rate coming from, right? What's my buy down on that? So what is what are you guys seeing with your buyer activity then? Is it impacting the buyers that are out there right now? Do, do you see it? So I, mean, I believe that buyers, a new set of buyers comes about every 90 days as a whole, okay. in general. Fair enough. Um, so I still think that there's a lot of buyers that we're in at that three and a half to four percent rate and that are still paying the same and not kind of equating. But then I see a new realm of buyers coming in that are kind of pumping the brakes and and not being so aggressive, right? Out of those 11 offers we had yesterday on Arapaho, right. you know, the, the, the clear underlier was not where we ended up, right? Most Correct. people were much less. Correct. Yeah, that's and those are newer buyers. Right, exactly. And I think you and I were talking about that earlier. You know, when we look at those buyers going into the outside areas, I mean, we, we look at the the um, you know the entry level markets. I think are going to be more impacted by a, a raise in the interest rates than say a San, uh, Menlo Park or Los Gatos, right? There's a little bit more of a uh, threshold that those buyers have in those areas. But when you yeah. go down to like Gilroy, Morgan Hill, that's where you're going to start seeing those changes in the market and be buyers kind of holding back because they simply can't afford a, a point increase mm-hmm. and still pay the same amount of money. It could affect you about 10%. And right. I got my first call of the year of, hey, were your clients still interested? We didn't get any <laughs> offers. Oh, you mean you had a party and nobody showed up? Right. So wow. if you have this strategy of listing super low and then you get nothing, you kind of have to backpedal a little bit. Yeah, and it's it's interesting to see how this is going to happen. Back in the day before we saw this last uh, appreciation run up for 10 10 years, prior to that, 
you know, anytime we saw a shift in the market, we would see those outlying areas like Gilroy, Morgan mm-hmm. Hill, Santa Cruz. And back then, we would see about a six-month uh, time lapse before we would sit hit Santa Clara County. I'm curious to know if we're going to see that expedite itself a little bit more to where now to maybe, maybe three three months. But you know, areas like Santa Cruz are still going really strong. Again, it's just that limited inventory. But again, I think when you see Gilroy and Morgan Hill, we might see that happening mm-hmm. sooner than later. No, I definitely agree, especially with people spreading out so much during the pandemic. I think places like Santa Cruz will hold their value much better than it being a secondary home market like it was maybe 10 years ago. Yeah, well, I mean, Santa Cruz has always had 50% commuters. Mm -hmm. I mean, they always live on the side of the hill. and And I think that's the one, you know, those areas opened up very quickly with appreciation because commutes weren't really an issue during the pandemic. And people thought, oh, everyone's gonna go remote even when this is done. We talked about this before in other podcasts. I don't need to repeat it too much, but look at the commutes now. Mm-hmm. They're right back to where they were pre-pandemic. So is that going to start changing those values as buyers move forward? Totally. So, and one thing that I wanted to touch on that you said earlier was um, how it affects entry level. The thing about it is, is if you already own a home, right, you're already in, you have the equity. If you sell low, you're going to buy low, right, in, in that mm-hmm. same tra- transition. If you sell high, you're going to buy high. Correct. So you can never time the market, but if you're already in it, it affects you much less. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the first time home buyers are that. Yeah. Get so, hit the- so, so, I mean, if you want to sell and rent and try to time the market, yeah. I mean, good luck. Well, we've had this conversation many times before. I mean, we've always said if you are that individual where it's the time right in your life to sell, mm-hmm. get it on the market now because the numbers we're seeing for these properties are something I've never experienced, even in dot com days and stuff, as far as how things have been driven up so high. And when we're looking at these, other areas, the entry level markets going for a thousand, thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a foot. If I've got any additional properties that I have right now to unload, I'm gonna unload them and I'm gonna reallocate that money somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And but, primarily probably outside of California. But there are still deals out there for buyers. I am calling this market the shiny, shiny oh, object syndrome market where mm-hmm. people are paying out of their shoes for, you know, relatively cheap product, quartz countertops, you know, the typical sure. Ikea wood shaker cabinets. Whereas if you just do it yourself, you're going to save exponentially. Yeah, I, I read something pretty interesting um, the other day that the California lawmakers were thinking about changing the way investors are able oh. to buy properties. Yeah, They're I now thinking about putting a 25% Correct. tax on properties that are bought and flipped. Yep. So I feel... I mean, just taking the investors out of the market, who I feel like are just throwing money around everywhere because they're making so much money off of them. I think hopefully, if that does go into effect, it might give our you know first-time home buyers and those entry-level buyers more of an opportunity. To so think about what you just said, because I saw the same article. It was a twenty-five percent um, flipper rate tax, that they're charging, yeah. right? Tax, tax on that. So if you think about it this way, that same item would be taxed at least a fifteen to twenty-five percent federally. So somebody is flipping a home in the state of California could be paying up to 50% Percent, uh, yeah. of their profit in taxes. What? I mean, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, that, that, that's, the, that's the whole issue what California has. And as much as we love it here and the beaches and the snow and everything else, man, it is becoming a very difficult place to have a business centered around real estate mm-hmm. right? with the taxation of it. It's just and starting it, to make less and less sense. Well, it, it, from a financial right, perspective. and this goes back to the other conversation we were talking about affordable housing, right? Mm-hmm. Why are they doing that? They want they want to take that away from the flippers and be able to give that to people who are going to live in those homes, right? Although I don't think it's too affordable, but I know you and I were having that conversation. Yeah, I mean, we're just so housing. short on. Yeah. I, I couldn't find the article that I saw, but uh, San Jose as a whole is supposed to be building. I mean, something like forty thousand right. affordable right. units, and we're at. 18,000. Yeah. So now the state's stepping in. So you're going to start to see, I've noticed it in Cambria and kind of by our house, um, a lot of kind of dumpy shopping centers are getting torn down right Absolutely. by Guitar Showcase, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. But yeah. they're specializing in like this this little community, five stories tall, will be for first responders and teachers. Correct. Yeah, Which I all, think is kind of cool. And it's all high, high density housing and it's also changing those valuations. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen how SB9 has really increased valuations on these just basic properties mm-hmm. that really doubled their value almost when SB9 came in. Right? Yeah. Uh, have you seen anyone take advantage of SB9 in a neighborhood that it doesn't really belong like Montesorino or I haven't oh. seen anybody take advantage, but I get a lot of ideas from people coming mm-hmm. into properties going, what if I did this? And I it's saw like, it by like Hermosa <laughs> beach a lot, Redondo beach in LA. Yeah. 
I, I, I think you are seeing, I mean, we've got a client, right, that's mm -hmm. putting ADUs kind of all over the place and he's using SB9 to be able to do that. Um, a lot of the cities are getting away from, you know, like for instance in Las Gatas, if it doesn't have, you know, you can't, you can't do an SB9 split on a property that has a grade in it and stuff. But the other challenge, if, if specifically you're talking about Las Gatas, Las Gatas has to add 1,900 homes to their inventory um, within the next eight years. Now that might not sound as for bad rentals? as- For rentals? Well, no, just for affordable housing mm. units, right? Or, or additional units than where they're at now. Now that might not sound like a big number compared to the 40,000 number you threw out with San Jose. But as you said, these are, these are they're continuing to increase because they're so behind being able to add any more mm -hmm. inventory or more homes. Because what does that mean? It's not 1,900 new homes where you go and you scrape and you put another home to, to replace it. It means 1,900. You're filling in blank yeah, spots in right? our, or exactly. destroying areas. Right. To, well, See, th I just heard they're going to fill up the zone of, the zone of like. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine the outdoor? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So good stuff, guys. Any funny stories? What, what have you guys had with your buyers? Anything? Uh, no, they're not funny. No, they're not funny. They're depressing. <laughs> they are depressing. And so now we're, I feel like I'm doing a lot of, well, we're, I feel like we got to a weird point in time right now where we're entering, what, the end of quarter one, and my buyers are now kind of at the point where it's so funny because every quarter they say it's the same thing. I think it's the top. What if we wait like another month? Well, I still think if, <laughs> well, if the we market's up 15%. From last time we did this podcast. Right, so, so, so say that again. What, the last time we did this podcast the was last about a time month we did ago, this podcast, right? if, if you were going to sell your house for a million dollars, well, if you didn't sell it, it's now worth $1,150,000. Whereas the, if you didn't buy a house, well, hopefully you just found another $150,000 because that's what you cost yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, we've always said this thing, but when's the right time to buy or sell? The right time's now. I mean, you're not going to find a deal today, but it'll be an incredible deal seven to 10 years from now. I think so, there's deals out there. Well, go for I it. I think there are deals out there, too. And it's like you said, it's, we're kind of in that time where it's like looking for the needle in the haystack. And I, you know, don't go after the ones that are pretty because people are yeah. still throwing fun money around. But go after the ones that you can jump on and, you know, make your own. I, I swear, ever since we had that conversation a couple podcasts ago about the stock market and how pe much money people are making, I'm looking more into that on um, proof of funds and just seeing where it's coming from. Right. Excuse my language. It's fuck you money. They're literally saying <laughs> this is free. Take it. Well, it's like what? Tesla's going to split again. Amazon's going to split. I mean, well, that's what makes our area so much more resilient to mm -hmm. these type of changes and everything. So, well, so but it's incredible stuff. Something that we've not really touched on as much as I think we should is. If you are a buyer in this market and your agent is maybe newer or doesn't go to award ceremonies or do any sort of networking, I mean, it's so important just to people no, in our true. office, right? Like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It, it truly I is. mean, to a point, right? I mean, don't be a dummy. But, like, to get your offer accepted out of 20 offers, at some point, you have to have some sort of relationship with these and agents. And I want to I clarify that, too, to the, uh, to the listeners because it's – we're, it is who you know, and we put you in the driver's seat. It's not we can just get you the, the property, and I think a lot of buyers think when we say that, like, oh, yeah, we know the other agent. They think we're just going to be able to walk in with whatever offer, put it on the table, and they're going to accept it. We'll put you in the driver's seat, but you still have to make that decision. And, again, Correct. it's our job to right. you know, kind like of Like last week, oops, sorry, you got me accepted for $60,000 less than the other highest right. offer based off previous relationships. Well, listen, we know we know when we go into contract with the agent on the other side, we need to make sure that thing's going to close. And it's not always about the highest number. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the terms and the person, as you said, it's who you know, right? And be able to have those conversations. And as we know, there with 16,000 agents here in Santa Clara County, there's probably a, a, a f less than a few hundred that are those professionals you want to deal with, mm -hmm. right? So when they come across on the other side of the table, that's that's definitely gonna gonna be that additional check mark for me to accept that offer. Right. So right. you as the listing agent can say, Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you have nothing to worry about. I know this agent super 100%. well. They're at the same price, you know. Let's or go or even less, like you said, sixty thousand yeah. dollars less of the relationship we had with that other agent to know that we were gonna get the deal done made it worthwhile. So And then the other thing that I think I'm seeing a lot of people make the mistake of is the people, maybe millennials in particular, between the age of, I don't know, 25 and 35. Who happens to be the number one purchaser of real estate 43% right of 43 millennials make up the housing market right now. Um, but they're going to places like Rocket Mortgage, Quicken. Right. And there's nothing wrong with those companies. I think they're better probably for a refinance. But I would agree. Not only is the relationship important for agent to agent, but having a lender that you work with as a team so that you can stand out and have your lender also check in, hey, 
Mr. and Mrs. Buyer are great. They're qualified, they're under it, and they're pre-approved. So having someone hyper-local with a good network name, as well, good here. name, good bank, someone responsive, your lender really matters too. 100%. Well, it's a whole team. Mm -hmm. It's a whole team, right? And we're the conductor of the orchestra. Yeah, so. we all work together That's to it. get it done. That's it. So. All right, guys. Uh, well, so there you go. There you have it, right? There you have Another it. Another incredible podcast with stock full of great information and everything. Uh, once again, thank you to all of our listeners and our, our clients for um, allowing us to celebrate our successes last night. And uh, if you ever need any advice whatsoever in real estate, give us a call. And remember, when choosing a real estate agent, who you work with matters. There you go. Take care, everybody. Thank you.